Is it true that that Mexicans eat moles? <laughs> well, Andrew, uh, yeah, it's true. It's true, <laughs> but uh, the mole that we eat, it's something different from what you think. <laughs> what do you think I'm thinking? I'm thinking of like some kind of rat that maybe lives in like the sewers or something. Yeah, something like that. I, I think you can, you're thinking in, in some kind of animal, but... Uh, this this molly it's it's different you know it's like a typical food from Puebla mm -hmm. and from other states like uh, Oaxaca and Veracruz and um, if I'm not wrong you okay. have already tried it that may or may not be true <laughs> yeah <laughs> it may not be true that you're not semi I don't think your voice sounds a little bit different. <laughs> maybe you have a cold or something <laughs> no <laughs> okay okay I think we should jump in today's episode no yeah bringing you under the sombrero from the eyes of an American and a Mexican sharing a fresh perspective of Mexico okay okay <laughs> Okay, thank you, Andrew. Thank you for inviting me uh, in this episode. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> no worries, no worries. I'm I'm glad to have you here. And no need to thank me. You can just say hi. How you doing, Andrew? And that's enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, believe me when I say that uh, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, since the first time you told me about this project, you know that uh, I'm so excited to start with it and I know and, and now that I'm here uh, I feel a little bit nervous but right. here I am <laughs> let's start with this <laughs> no, no you're all good you're all good it was the same feeling for our first friend we had on the, the week before actually two weeks before when when our listeners will hear this he he felt really nervous like starting out and everything like we were listening to like the podcast. He's like, oh man, like I sounded so nervous. Like I didn't even sound comfortable. And like, bro, it's the same thing for us when we started this podcast. It's a normal thing. And I think as, as we start to talk a little bit more, you'll be more comfortable and everything. And it won't be a big deal. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I know it's, 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 it's something different that uh, uh, the things that we used to do uh, every day. Sure. Uh, even uh, when we talk each other, when mm -hmm. we have our talks, this is different because uh, we have audience, <laughs> 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 and that that's why I feel a little bit nervous. But I'm fine. No, no, that, I I agree with you. It's something different. It's a new dynamic, but we don't have like a per se like a live audience in front of us that we need to be like looking at people. Or, like, <laughs> yeah, it's just a real advantage, but. <laughs> It still feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I understand that and everything. And I, I think today is like uh, a special date between you and, and I, not like dating or anything, but like something else, no? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we met each other two years ago and we have our first talk <laughs> and it's a special day for us. It's crazy to think about. Two years later, we're here. I'm back in the United States, and you're over in Mexico, and we're recording this episode for for the first time together. It's like the beginning of something new again. <laughs> yeah, I know something new again. <laughs> so tell me, like, I know you know, and I both know that I know that Mexicans don't eat moles. Maybe there's a, a few people <laughs> out there that that eat moles in whatever part of the world, but. I think there's a, a type of food called mole, no? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, in Mexico, we have a lot of kind of food, mm -hmm. and you know that. Um, but one of the favorite uh, food in Mexico, it's mole, mm -hmm. especially mole poblano, uh, because it's a very traditional uh, food uh, throughout Mexico. And it's a food that you can find in, in any restaurant especially in Puebla, mm -hmm. in Puebla, Oaxaca, or Veracruz. Uh, but it is more special and tasty if you eat it in the town outside of the big cities. You know, mm -hmm. you can uh, 
try it and, and or you can find it in in a restaurant in in the big cities like Oaxaca, Veracruz or Puebla. <laughs> but if you try it uh, in the towns outside of the city, it's special because it's a traditional way of, of prepare uh, the way of, of they prepare it's it's unique mm -hmm. um, because in these places the people prepare it uh, completely by hand uh, I don't know if you okay. understand by scratch uh, mm -hmm. yeah so and it's something very laborious because it has many ingredients especially uh -huh. in, in this food uh, like a cinnamon chocolate almonds and we have a, a special banana here in Mexico that we call it um, platano macho uh -huh. like a, like like a male banana <laughs> <laughs> Sounds weird, but we call it <laughs> platano macho because it's a, it's, it's a, a big banana with a, a different flavor. Hey, we're a clean podcast, okay? What are you <laughs> trying to do? Here? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's weird, but it's, it's different. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> so, I'm going to cry. I know. <laughs> but... So if you visit Puebla, uh, and this is one of those you do have to try, uh, mm -hmm. mole, uh, because if you don't, it will be like you not having been in Puebla. Okay. You know, it's it's like one of the first things you need to, to do when you came to Puebla. But I need to uh, warning you, <laughs> because uh, this kind of food, it's uh, like a bomb when you eat it uh, <laughs> the <Okay>. first time. <laughs> what do you because, mean by that? <laughs> it's because of the ingredients, you know, uh -huh. uh, especially with people from America, if uh -huh. we can say that. Uh, you are I not... You <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> go on, go on. <laughs> uh, you are not... Um, you, you're not eat. Uh, food with this kind of ingredients. It's like uh, uh, I don't know. It's maybe like an Indian food. Uh -huh. uh, it's so like spicy. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. uh, and it's uh, it's different. Maybe if you uh, are right to Puebla and you decide to uh, eat mole the first day, uh, the first day, I think it's not a good idea. <laughs> I may or may not have a similar experience to that being in Mexico uh, City, but I don't think I told you this, actually. Uh, it was the second day we had went to like a, a small restaurant in Mexico City. Okay. And I had mole, mole negro, like black mole with uh, chicken. Okay. And it was a very, very sweet mole. And You, uh -huh. you have a point. Uh-huh. You were in Mexico City. I was in Mexico City. No, in Puebla, not in Oaxaca, not in Veracruz. I was in Puebla, but I only... Yeah, but you don't you don't try mole in Puebla. You try mole in Mexico City. It's so different, believe me. No, I know. I only... I don't know if you remember, but um, you and your wife had given me like a pack of mole poblano, remember? Yeah. Uh-huh. And I had made it at, at home, actually. And it's so different, like, the if you compare it to, like, a sweet mole, like the one I was describing to you before that I had in Mexico City. It's very heavy, like, extremely heavy on your stomach. Like, I can't really compare it to something that I've had before and, and everything. Like, me maybe like you said like it's i think it's something i need to try like different types of moles like i'm somebody that enjoys spicy food maybe i'm not like the the average gringo that yeah. that okay. you know but like <laughs> it, i just need something that like kind of hits like a little more than something that's like really sweet it's like something a flavor like i'm not used to per se yeah i know i know that, that that's why i i I told you uh, it's different to try mole in Mexico City uh, and try mole in Puebla, where they make this mole in a completely different way. You know, 
that, that that's why I, I from came, the heart. <laughs> yeah, from the heart. Yeah, believe believe me, believe me. Uh, uh-huh. I I was witness uh, when one of my aunts prepared molly, and it's uh-huh. it's believe me, it's so hard to prepare it. It, it takes hours or maybe two days to prepare it. Believe me, and and and, we, and when you saw all the ingredients. Uh-huh. And when you when you saw all the things that they put in it, you think that all all that things I put in my stomach, <laughs> <laughs> all that uh, spicy things, all that kind of um, I don't know how you say that that kind of uh, oh, ingredients that uh, make your uh, stomach feel uh, or fills you like a stomach ache, you know. Uh-huh. And that's why I told uh, I told you before that it's it's not a good idea to eat mole the first day that uh, uh, in in Puebla or in Mexico, but you have a different experience. <laughs> 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 I, I would definitely like to try some some other moles like red mole, or I don't remember I don't know what you would call this in Spanish, but there's a mole that's like. Um, like a yellowish golden appearance that has like peanuts in it, I know. But peanuts. It's like uh we call it encacahuatado. It's like uh like, like uh, a peanut flavor. Yeah, like a peanut oh. flavor, yeah. Encacahuatado. Encacahuatado. Something like that is right on my alley because <laughs> as, as you know I enjoy making salsa de cacahuete. And that's basically just like a a peanut salsa with uh, chili de arbol. Yeah, I oh know. <laughs> it's so <laughs> no, good. No, no. It's so good. Yeah, it, it's good, but it's different. It's I, like exactly. mole. It's it's like uh, uh, I don't know how you say like a pasta, mm-hmm. the mole, and it's uh, like a paste. It's or? Yeah, like a paste, like a paste. Uh, it's 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 tasty. When you when you were seeing your aunt make this mole, how many ingredients was she putting into this? How many? Uh, I think it's like uh, twenty different ingredients. <laughs> yeah, I, I just mentioned like a five cinnamon not chocolate. Even five, chocolate. I don't yeah, think. Okay. yeah, I know. Not even five. Like uh, uh, they they used to to put on it like uh, three or four different um, chiles. Yeah, dried chilies, no. Yeah, dried chilies, right? Mm-hmm. Right, dried chilies. So, but uh, you can imagine four different dried chilies: <laughs> chocolate, cinnamon, uh, almonds. But it, it's like uh, twenty different ingredients. And in, in regards to this, like, what is your favorite dish to have? Like this with, like, what's your favorite type of mole? As as we were talking about, there's different types of mole and. What do you prefer to have it with? Well, uh, uh, they have a different taste, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I always prefer the mole that um, you can get in these little towns outside mm-hmm. of the city, of the big cities, you know. Like um, we call it mole de pueblo mm-hmm. because uh, all all the ingredients are are so natural and even the the, the, the animals or the meat uh, it's it's the taste is different and that's why i always prefer uh, mole de pueblo <laughs> that come from a biased uh, standpoint that maybe you were you lived in puebla at some time in your life or were born in there or? I, I born in 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 a place near to puebla uh-huh. the, near to the capital of state of Puebla. Yeah, I born in this uh, place that calls Atlixco. What was I'm, that? Uh-huh. I'm going to spell it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I know it's difficult. It's A T L I X C O Atlixco. It's actually funny because I think you can remember. It. I always thought you were from Jalisco. Yeah, it's another state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in it's Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> yeah, that that that's that's why I, I need to spell it. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Atlisco is a a pueblo Mexico, or sounds still still sounds weird for me to say this in English, like a magical town, and yeah, it's like a magical town. Uh huh. That that Mexico has these different places, and 
inside of Mexico. What what was it like growing up in in this town? What what can you remember? What it's like? Well, Atlixco is like a small town in the south of the capital of Puebla. It's located uh, about 18 miles from the capital. And you're getting really specific on me. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> you with the facts. Yeah, no, no, I don't, I don't have the facts, <laughs> but <laughs> it's, uh, I learned uh, a lot about distance <laughs> with, with the running. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> so uh, many people know at Lixco for uh, its uh, rich places to eat. You know, for it's uh, this uh, a good weather that it has, mm -hmm. uh, but above all, uh, for the abundant amount of flowers, because we have these um, greenhouses, uh -huh. uh, in a lot of greenhouses, and most of the people that came to Atlisco uh, came in in order to buy flowers because they are uh, very cheap mm -hmm. and uh, that's why people came to at least go and it's la la like like you say it's one of the nine uh, magical towns that Puebla has and it's uh, uh, growing up here was something special and beautiful because in at those years it was a um, quieter place uh -huh. yeah you know well, without tourists like now without so much population like now <laughs> uh -huh. and uh, it, it, it was a place a uh, so quiet place um, to I love to be away from the noise and stress of the big cities uh -huh. you know but today it is something that has changed a lot uh, because it has become um, a very special place for the tourism. You know, uh, we have a tourist from Puebla or another state every year. E everything because we have a lot of uh, a lot of things to visit, a lot of uh, interesting things to visit. But for me, uh, at Lixco, it's still a very quiet place compared with those great cities like Mexico, Guadalajara, Monterrey, or Puebla. And it's a place that can still offers you a quiet places to spend a weekend, for example. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not like a big city that you go to these big cities to in order to visit a lot of uh, interesting places. Uh, at Lixco offers you uh, very quiet places. So uh, it's a place with a lot of story, a lot of legends, and um, <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of places that uh, a few people know that exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I will even dare uh, to say that. People who live there don't know a lot of things that I I can mention to you. It, it's it's a very special place and a very still a very quiet place. Just for to start with things like, how do you feel about like the changes that you have seen in at least school since growing up till now? Are you like proud of the changes or like do you feel like? Mm, it being like a Pueblo Mexico kind of changed the culture and everything within the town. Being a a, a Pueblo Mexico, it it's makes a, a big change in, mm. in, in the town because uh, from being a, a very 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 quiet place, it came to a, a very noisy place. It's uh, only for seasons, especially in on winter because we have this uh, special event that we call Villa Illuminada. Um, this is new for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's like a, a performance, you know. Okay. Like kind of like a cultural performance? No. no. Yeah, like a cultural performance because they uh, add a lot of lights to the downtown. Okay. To the buildings. Uh, they 
uh, add a lot of uh, lights with with Christmas things or with a lot of uh, a lot of cultural things like uh, games that we used to play when we were kids, like Jojo, like Valero, like Trompo, <laughs> and uh, a lot of people came uh, to visit this performance to to see this performance since. Like uh, 10 or 12 years ago, uh, we have this uh, big affluence of tourists. N not since we have a uh, magical town. Pueblo we... Mágico. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Pueblo Mágico. Yeah, uh, Sounds better. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this start uh, starts when they make this performance for the first time, like uh, 12 or 10 years ago. Obviously... Uh, all the towns start to change because we start to have uh, these big uh, stores like uh, the ones that you can find only in the big cities. Uh -huh. And a lot of people came every weekend to, to visit at Lisco in order to buy flowers, in order to visit some uh, restaurants. And Every weekend, you cannot find this quiet anymore in Atlixco, especially the weekends. Uh, in, in During the weekend, you can uh, see these quiet streets, these quiet places, but when the weekend arrives, uh, it just... Uh, change everything change in the in the city everything change you can uh, see a lot of traffic a lot of people <laughs> believe me it's it's a different city every weekend do you kind of like that dynamic of at least go that you can see like a different city within like the same week kind of get like a different feel different perspective while still being in the same place at the same time uh, no, it's 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 difficult uh, to to stay in in at least going a, in a weekend, and it's different to stay in at least go uh, during you know, on um, during the week during during the week because believe me when I say it's totally different. It's a different place uh -huh. because you have uh, this quiet on or from Monday to Thursday. Mm -hmm. But when when the Fridays arrive and then Saturday and Sunday, that's a different place. It's like you are in um, part of Mexico City. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so crowded. It's so crowded, and it's it's difficult to to be in 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 downtown because there's a lot of people, a lot of traffic. The, the, the dynamic it's it's not a. Uh, a good thing for the people who live in Atlixco. Yeah, for the people that have lived there, normally like the natives uh, that live there, it's got to be kind of weird for like, I don't know, if you always grown up there your whole life, say 40, 50 years old, and you've been there your whole life to kind of see like these huge changes. I don't know how I would feel, honestly. It would be hard to, maybe it would be a good thing for some people and others that wouldn't be such a good thing because like the things maybe like you used to do are more difficult because the the amount of people that that are around now and everything has changed yeah it's uh for those who uh don't have the experience to live in in a big city it's weird it's difficult to to be a part of it uh, only for three or two days uh but for the ones that we can we have the chance to live in a big city uh it's still quiet <laughs> <laughs> even when you you stay there uh when it's so crowded mm -hmm. it's still quiet because if, if you uh, compare with mexico city for example sure. uh, there's there's uh still at least could still have this quiet, but you don't, you don't, you can't find this type of quiet in Mexico City. No, I, I from my experience here, I think it's nearly impossible to experience any kind of like 
quietness within Mexico City. It's literally uh, impossible. And yeah, it's it's impossible. It, if you can find it, tell me. <laughs> I would like to know. <laughs> no, there's no place like that in Mexico City. <laughs> I I would love to kind of go deeper into at least school, but I think we're we're running out of time here, unfortunately, my friend. Uh, okay. <laughs> we have to. We have to. <laughs> Sounds good to me, but you can follow us here at all social medias at Under the Sombrero. And I'm Andrew and I'm Hector. From Atlixco. <laughs> from Mexico. <laughs> Bye, okay, everyone. from Atlixco, Mexico. Okay. That's better. <laughs> Very good. Bye everyone. <laughs>